Hello and welcome back to the Girl Fit Method podcast. So on today's podcast episode, we are joined by Girl Fit family member Zanab. Hello and welcome. Hello. Thank you so much for having me. My absolute pleasure. Have you been on a podcast before? No, I have not. <laughs> yes. So we're the first. How exciting. Yeah. Yes, How very exciting. That? And ha- yeah, you're feeling, cool. you're feeling excited. Yes, definitely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm so excited to bring uh, this conversation to all of the listeners and for them to get to know a little bit more about you. So maybe I'll hand it over to you first of all. Do you want to let us know who you are, what you do? Um, yeah, sure. yeah, So I'm Zainab um, and um, by profession, I'm a doctor. I am training to be a nephrologist. I'm in my second last year of training. Um, So as a doctor, I have been in training for about 10 years now. It's a long journey. Um, I'm also a wife and I have people. Um, I have heaps of friends. Um, I also um, paint a bit in my free time, something that I picked up during the COVID lockdowns. Um, I love hiking. I love working out. And I'm really, really passionate about all things fitness. I love that. And can I also add to that, that I think you're an incredibly positive, passionate person who has an incredible energy about her. You are just Thank you. one of these people that is able to see the positives in almost every situation. And I think you're the kind of person that every single person should have in their life because it's oh, contagious, that energy. That's yeah, really sweet. Cheers. I really mean that. We, uh, we absolutely you. love you. So you're obviously a part of the GirlFit Method family and maybe it's a good place to start. We can talk about your own journey with health mm-hmm. and fitness. So going back, I guess, to when you first started your own health and fitness journey, do you remember how old you were? Probably I would say 13. Okay, so quite young. Quite young. Yeah, yeah. I've been body conscious um, since I was very, very young, I would say. Right. So 13, I'm assuming you just became aware of your body. Were there things that were ex- on the external parts of your life that were kind of influencing that or making you maybe potentially more hyper-focused on it? Kind of what kick-started that awareness yeah. of your body? Um, yeah, I'm, I'm not really sure be- just because it was such a long time ago. Um, my memory of being a 13-year-old is like, you know, I for the first time I realized that exercise is really important and that's something I should be incorporating um, on a daily basis and that I should cut out junk food. So that's my earliest memory. Um, I was actually with a friend who was having a whole bag of Doritos and I said, I'm not having that today. <laughs> Excuse me. Um, what did she say? Yeah. Um, she was like, okay, that's weird. And then she just proceeded to, you know, finish the bag. Um, yeah. And then I remember I used to um, help my mom um, babysit children. And I would like take a child in the pram and just, you know, run or walk and do that sort of stuff. Um, and, you know, I was very, um, you know, I've, I've, I was into athletics at school. I used to do high jump, played every sport pretty much under the sun. Um, so yeah, I do, I, I did grow up quite active. I don't think I was particularly very body conscious till I was probably around 16, 17, really. Right. Okay. So it started off quite innocently and I guess a way to look after yourself rather than wanting to change your body because you weren't happy with it. Would that be that's, correct? That's right. Yes, right. that's right. So later teen years, then it sort of became a body image issue. So what sort of shifted? So how did you go from feeling quite confident and viewing exercise and nutrition as a means to feel healthy and strong to maybe potentially it being a way to be able to change your body because you felt like you weren't good enough? I think it's probably a lot to do with peer pressure. So, you know, I grew up at a time where there was no social media. So there wasn't any such influence in my life. But, you know, you see these beautiful people on TV that just look perfect. Plus, um, a lot of my my friends, especially through med school, were just constantly dieting. So I remember in med school, like, you know, during lectures or whatever, sometimes just gossiping with each other and chatting to each other. And we would be actually like counting calories and how much calories um, we'd eat in that day. So I remember very vividly getting really conscious back then. Um, I'm, you know, I think, you know, in retrospect, I've always been built a bit differently. I do find that I do, you know, put on muscle a lot easier than some other people out there. 
I think everybody's different. And so I was comparing myself to these very petite girls, which I think in retrospect probably didn't do much good. But I think I was just restricting calories all the time. So probably from the age of 18 onwards, I've I've really restricted my calories. Um, then there have been periods of time, especially after med school, when I've been in the hospital working as a doctor, that I sort of, I would say, let myself go. Mm. And that would be because I'm assuming a very high pressure environment, you're working a lot. And was it just a matter of not having the time to prioritize your health? Yeah. Mainly, yeah. mainly. And, you know, you just come up, you know, home at the end of the day, you're just exhausted. Um, I mean, I try to meal prep, but I think I was not particularly conscious about macros back then. Mm. Um, also, I, I'm, I'm from um, I'm from Asia. So my background is subcontinental. I'm from pa- Pakistan. Um, our diets are very carb heavy um, as well. And I think, you know, I was eating a lot of sort of carb heavy foods, not enough protein for a prolonged period of time and often at times at night especially I was just ravenous and I would indulge in like whatever I could get my hands on yeah yeah it kind of gets like that doesn't it when you restrict during the day even if it's not intentional it's kind of like when your brain has the ability to stop and go oh my goodness I haven't eaten all day it's so funny you say that because we also work with lots of nurses who do lots of night shift and work really long shifts and it can be really hard because your job is so incredibly taxing that you end up not being the priority getting the work done and doing the shift becomes the priority which is a real issue definitely especially in healthcare you know um if for instance if you're in plane I really love the analogy where they say you know put your mask on first but I think it's in healthcare especially a lot of us don't do that so shift work itself you know the um, altered circadian rhythms they in turn you know really affect your body as well um they affect your sleep cycle and how hungry you really get Mm, yeah oh absolutely and then the lack of sleep as well Yes, exactly. Will absolutely have that impact too. So, all right, well, let's talk about, so you obviously then were trying to restrict the calorie counting thing became a bit of a focus. What sort of happened after that? You then moved into it not being a priority for you. Is that when you decided to reach out to us or was there some time in between where you had tried some additional things? I have tried heaps of things. So um, in the past six, seven years, I've tried restricting my calories to 1200 a day, um, which, you know, as soon as you stop doing that, you gain all the weight back. And that's exactly what happened. I lost like 10 kilos. And not only did I gain that back, I gained some more probably because I just ruined my metabolism. And then, you know, I go through these periods of, oh, okay, you know, nothing is working. I might as well just eat whatever I want. And then the guilt hits and then you start restricting again. So that's what I did. I what, One thing I did do is incorporate weight training. So when I was back home in Pakistan, I've been in Australia for like 11 years now. And strength training, strength training is something I only started after moving here. There's not a lot of focus on that back home, like, like women mostly exercise mostly in the form of um, either they dance at home or they go out um, and walk or run. They don't usually go to the gym and they don't usually lift heavy weights. So when I, you know, moved to Australia, I was like, I'm, I want to have a trainer and they recommended strength training. So I have been strength training for 10 years, very inconsistently though. My main issue has been consistency. consistency. And so I um, had then, you know, tried weight training on and on. I tried running um, and I love doing that. So I still still did that. But there were periods of time and I was just not going to the gym at all. Um, and I've tried different type of diets. So three years ago, I think it was probably I tried keto diet um, again, lost a bunch of weight and then put it all back together. So, um, you know, I had been watching you on Instagram for maybe a couple of years before I finally decided to reach out because everything you you were saying made total sense yeah <laughs> that's great <laughs> that's funny you did your research you wanted to make sure you trust yes. me I think that's yeah. actually so good though because 
Um, the coaching relationship is one where there needs to be a lot of trust. And I think it's important for you to align with your coach and to be able to really be able to trust the process. And in order to be able to do that, you need to trust that what that person's saying is correct. Right. And it obviously yeah. resonated with you. Yeah. Um, I just have to say that Julie, Coach Julie and I absolutely blush over you because you really are one of those people that um, really tr- does, like I just spoke about, trust the process, but does it in a way where you understand that there's different parts to the journey and sometimes yeah. the journey is not linear, right? Sometimes we have right. wins, sometimes things can feel difficult, but it's all a part of getting to that end goal eventually. Absolutely. Let's talk about your own journey and maybe some of the wins, but also maybe some of the difficulties as well in over that you've had to overcome over the past couple of months. Do you kind of want to touch on that? I guess like your goal was fat loss, right? Yeah. What has been your experience and what have you found, I guess, difficult? Um, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, So I think at the start, you know, the concept of reverse dieting was very difficult, like I knew it needed to be done. um, But I was, there were points where I was having to force myself to eat, which I found it hard to get over that because it just felt counterintuitive. Mm -hmm. But because I was lifting very heavy weights in the gym, I realized that my body actually needs those calories and it needs that protein to build the muscle I want and lean out. Um, So once I think I, you know, got into the mindset of, you know, I'm not just looking at that number on the scale, which, you know, fluctuates all the time, like, you know, you you say, you know, if you've had too much food, the food in your belly will also, you know, make the weight go up. Um, So the biggest shift for me has been, I think, you know, my mindset has shifted in a way that that number on the scale. Yeah, sure. You know, if it was a bit lower than before, I I do, I do, um, you know, become happy with that. But if it goes up a bit, or if it doesn't move, I don't rely on that anymore to tell me how I'm doing. Um, I let my body tell me how I'm doing, which I think it's been a shift so I focus on things like energy how many you know how my bowel habits are um how well I'm sleeping how satisfied I feel um and how much I'm you know able to exercise weight you know do how much weights I can lift in the gym um so I think that's yeah I think the mindset change has been the biggest thing for me um I do find it hard sometimes still to hit the protein but it's it's not hard in a way it was before because you know through this process you learn a lot about foods and what kind of macros they have um so for me it's if i am you know behind on my cal- uh, on my protein target for instance it used to be hard but no it's not anymore i always have something available that will get me there love that I just want to quickly break it down because a couple of points you covered there. First of all, first of all, it's the shift in mindset. And I think this is pivotal if you want to be successful, especially throughout a reverse diet, because if your focus is fat loss throughout a reverse diet, you are going to be disappointed because the majority of the time people don't lose weight during a reverse diet. In fact, I would say the majority of people will gain and not necessarily fat, but as you know, and you just touched on the more food you eat, the heavier you're going to be because there's more food in your belly, right? And if all you're thinking is, I want to see the scale decrease, you're setting yourself up for failure. So shifting your focus to things that are performance goals and how you're feeling, how much stronger you're getting. So you actually feel like you're accomplishing something as opposed to feeling like you're not getting anywhere closer to your goal. When in fact, and we talk about this all the time, in order to reach that end goal, that fat loss goal, that time increasing your calories is actually getting you there, even yeah. though you're not seeing a, you know, a decrease in scale weight. And to add to that, I think not having the scale have power over you is mm. incredibly freeing because once you are not looking at that as your sole purpose of progress, you end up realizing that exercise, nutrition, whatever plan you're following has all of these additional benefits that have nothing to do with your scale weight, right? Absolutely. Yeah. And that's kind of what we do want to touch on, which we wanted to speak about with you as being um, a qualified doctor in the medical field is the benefits of lifting weights. And I think we can always think about, and a lot of women think about exercise just as a means to burn calories and to lose weight, but 
Like we forget, especially I think when we're younger, that we're going to get old one day. And the way that we treat our body when we're younger is going to dictate how we feel a lot of the time when we're older. So let's talk about, actually, let's talk about the, I guess, the issues with under eating and maybe not exercising correctly and how that can show up and have issues later in life in particular for women. Yeah. So I think I, um, you know, a lot of the people I see um, who know you struggle with weight or have weight related illnesses. So for instance, you know, obesity is really, um, you know, an epidemic in Australia um, and it can cause all sorts of disease, including high blood pressure, high cholesterol, diabetes. Um, and I think more than that, a people, a lot of people who are obese or who are overweight actually don't have enough muscle mass either. So basically their body composition is such that it's it's a pro-inflammatory state. They get inflamed easily. We're seeing a a lot of a rise in autoimmune disorders. Um, I'm training to be a kidney specialist and um, being overweight has a direct impact on how hard your kidneys have to work and you're overloading them if you know if you are overweight. Um, plus, if you don't have enough muscle mass, you don't have that reserve for when you get older because it is a lot harder to build muscle when you get older. You just, you know, your hormonal profile changes with time. So um, in my practice, you know, I, I I see people who are a bit older, who've been overweight for years. And unfortunately, I see them when the damage has been done. And so my focus shifts on then trying to um, um, slow down the progression of damage, especially in the kidneys. And, you know, we often talk about, you know, things like high blood pressure, for instance, if uh, someone is able to lose five to 10% of their body weight of fat, their blood pressure can go down significantly. People can reverse their diabetes by, you know, eating well, hitting those macros and um, lifting weights helps bring your sugars down as well. Yeah, it's, it's actually so incredible the impact that it has um, on so many aspects of our health. And I think there is such an obesity epidemic. And it's funny because we probably talk a lot about girls that are yeah. maybe don't fit that criteria, right? No, they don't. Yes, no. Right. And, um, but there is still being on the other spectrum, right? So being on the other end where you're not eating enough, where you are exercising too much or maybe you're not you don't have enough body fat on you is almost just an I mean you're the doctor but from from what I understand is just as bad as being overweight or obese on our health I have looked after such people as well you know women who have been chronically under eating I mean the way we see them often is when it's clinical often you know when they have the diagnosed condition called anorexia nervosa Uh, but yes absolutely so for instance I had a picture on my phone um, of someone's x-ray who had been under eating for years and years and you know what a heart looks like I'm not sure whether you've seen an x-ray of a heart but it's quite a big big proper big structure if I was to x-ray my chest it should be this size but that heart was this thin so absolutely absolutely wow. both um, both um, extremes are obviously not great yeah and um, I think it's so important to think about your future when we're so focused on what we look like and what we want to look like in the moment. And usually it's particularly when we're not old, when we're young, we forget that there are repercussions, right? And, and you get older, you get older and those repercussions show up and you're not able to move and you maybe potentially have osteopenia, osteoporosis, which is a horribly, horrible disease, but we don't think about that. You know, exercise should be about longevity as much as it is about aesthetics and um, especially for women, you mentioned around your hormone profile changing, you know, we don't produce as much, as much estrogen as we age and we go through menopause, which then, you know, leaves us a bit more susceptible to cancers, heart disease to um, yeah, bone density issues as well, which will really impact your quality of life. And I guess it's getting women to think about that earlier, right? And I guess like from your perspective as a doctor, how do you do that? How do you get someone to think, hey, like the choices that you're making right now are going to impact your ability to live a long, healthy life in the future? 
So, yeah, so this is something I, you know, very passionate about. Like I said, unfortunately, most times when we see patients, the damage is done. But what I try and shift focus is from there is, you know, I will give you medication, for instance, to do such and such. But medications can only do so much. And they also come with a variety of side effects. Let's try everything you can try first and take it from there. And unfortunately, what I do find is a lot of doctors are not um, engaging with patients that way. The public system is such that, unfortunately, we do not have a lot of time in our clinics when we are seeing a patient. So in most instances, we get 20 minutes per patient. And often that's not a lot of time to talk about those things. But what I usually do is I talk to various women and look, most women I'm talking about are overweight and they have kidney disease or high blood pressure or diabetes. And I, you know, talk to them about things like, have you thought about the fact that we can actually maybe reverse some of these things if you were to lose maybe a few kilos? And, you know, you see this light bulb moment in their head because somebody is actually giving them hope and control because it's really important to feel in control of your body because when you see a doctor, you feel like, okay, you know, my health is in their hands. It's not the case. Yeah, you're in control, aren't you? Yeah, absolutely. But I think, and, and, you know, correct me if I'm wrong, but I feel like sometimes it can be very overwhelming, you know, just getting told you need to lose weight. It's like, well, okay, absolutely. yeah, duh. So how, how? do I do that? Yeah, yeah. Exactly. Yes, exactly. And I think what's, what's really difficult as well is for the majority of people, we have complicated relationships with food. So for some people and for lots, actually, we rely on food as a source of comfort. So just to say eat less isn't really going to work because we ha- we're using food as a tool to numb our feelings or, you know, life is That's hard, right? right? and deal with stress and so when we're told just to take that away well then what do you replace that with and people don't have those tools to be able to do that that's right so I try and talk to my patients not in regards to what they should be cutting down on or what they shouldn't be doing but instead I focus on what they should be doing Um, so for instance I you know in that brief time I do go over a day of um, a day diary of what they eat Um, and immediately point out a few things that they could change. And it's often incorporating more different forms of foods, different types of food with different macronutrients rather than just eating the same thing that they have been. And, you know, to change things um, around a bit, simple stuff, really. Um, And, you know, if somebody is feeling overwhelmed and they don't think they can exercise much, just setting a target, you know, of 30 minutes, four four times a week, for instance, just a walk, a brisk walk is good enough. Um, And just with those little changes, we often see great results. Yeah. I think people believe that they need to go, you know, you're either all or nothing. You know, you need to be going to the gym four to five times per week. You need to be really strict with your diet. Otherwise it's not worth it. But anything extra that you can do then exactly. what you're currently doing right now is actually great. Yeah. Is it an awesome improvement? Exactly. Isn't it? That's yeah. Right. And yeah. I'm sure from your studies, you would see that the additional health benefits just by implementing even just movement and walking is just huge. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Like in impact on mental health Mm -hmm. um so and I, i do think like even the foods we eat i think to a degree impact how we feel up here the hormones that are produced as a result of that plus exercise you know it's it's actually one of the best antidepressants so a lot of the people i see do have chronic illnesses and with chronic illnesses there's a component of chronic depression as well um um, and so you know to them i talk to them about how important exercise is um again not a psychiatrist but from the studies that i've seen head to head trials between an antidepressant and exercise both are equally effective Yeah. Yeah. It's amazing. And I think for everyone that does exercise regularly, you know, that, you know, you can wake up in the morning and not want to exercise, but you go and make yourself exercise and you just feel better. It's amazing. It really, really is amazing. Absolutely. And when you do that, when you really feel like you don't want to, um, but then you end up doing it, a, that is in, in, in itself a big thing because you feel like you couldn't do something, but you did it. So you feel good yeah. about that. Plus the endorphins that come with exercise, yeah. you just feel unstoppable. Yeah, I couldn't agree anymore. To finish off the podcast episode, I want to ask you a question. So throughout sure. your time with Girl Fit Method, I would love to know, as someone who is so educated and very clever, very 
um, successful in so many different aspects of life, you want to be able to optimize everything, right? So you want to be the best version of you. And I would love to know yeah. if there's, let's just say three things that you have seen improve over the past couple of months that have really made a positive impact in your life, in other aspects of your life, not just your health and fitness. Um, so my mood certainly has been, um, yeah, it's changed. I've gone from feeling, you know, very lazy and down, not sleeping well to feeling more energetic and actually, actually really feeling happier. Um, so that's something that's improved considerably. Um, um, there has like through your, you know, the, the education that I've received from you guys, for instance, hitting those macro targets, um, protein, for instance, and how important strength training is that has changed how I actually talk to my patients and the things I talk to them about. Um, and, you know, even for my older patients who've never done uh, weight bearing exercises before, it's something that I encourage now before I hadn't been doing that. Um, those would be the two main things. Um, I think, you know, it's just become a lot easier to um, know what to eat and know what to do. And the stress and anxiety from, you know, eating out, for instance, is, has gone as well. Mm, so that healthier relationship with food and understanding like how you can make it fit within your lifestyle and still see incredible results. That's right. Oh, I love to, I love hearing that it's impacted the way that you and your profession actually then impacts your own clients because yeah. that's how we make change, especially from the health and medical field. I mean, you are the face of when someone is unwell, the advice that they're going to get is going to come from you. And that's such a huge responsibility on your part, right? And to be able to lead them in the right direction is just absolutely magic. And to think that we actually were able to help in that capacity. Yes, in some capacity. Yeah, yeah, it's so incredible. Sanab, you are just such a light. You know, I think you're absolutely amazing. Thank you Thank so you. much for jumping on here, sharing your wisdom and your knowledge. And I just can't wait to see how much more you achieve with us. Thank you very much. Um, You guys have been just amazing. I, yeah. It's been great. And big shout out to Coach Julie, who is just absolutely Indeed. phenomenal. Yeah. Love her. Love Julie. Thanks.